So some more Islanders DM me, Yuande makes an important statement. Let's talk some Caleb and Justine stuff from yesterday's video and Curtis is coming for Mora. Hey guys, it's Murad Morali. Hope you guys are doing well today. Back again with another video. If you haven't subscribed guys, click that button for daily and consistent content. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe guys. Click that button and let's get straight into this video. I woke up this morning with a throbbing migraine. I've already had this type of migraine twice in my life. It is throbbing that like you feel like you can't do anything and you need the strongest medicine. And I was like, there are no videos coming out today at all. It is what it is. But somehow I feel like I bounced back very, very quickly and I feel okay now. And let's get straight into this. So obviously I want to talk about the whole Caleb you want, um, Caleb you want it, God forbid. <laughs> wow, Caleb Justine stuff that um, obviously I was speaking about yesterday. There were some people who, you know, disagreed with me. Some people say that they were disappointed by what I was saying about how I feel like, you know, Caleb shouldn't lose his endorsements and stuff like that. What I really meant by this is, is that, you know, dragging somebody is one thing. If you, do, if you act stupid, you wanna get stupid prizes. I have dried Caleb, you guys have dried Caleb, and he deserves it because he's an absolute fool for what he did. And we're gonna get into it deeper in a video later this week. But um, my only issue was just the worrying of, you know, Caroline Flack and death. And the reason why I'm not comparing it to Sophie and Mark, Sophie and Mike, sorry, is because those two are different reasons. They weren't directly related to the onslaught of the press and relentless nonsense. Um, they always had other issues going on. Um, but we had Caroline Flack who got dragged rightfully so because she decided to do that madness to her boyfriend. Then the press and the, you know, the public scrutiny are gonna drag her of course, but then it, it just didn't stop. She lost endorsements. People were finding out where she was working, trying to stop this, stop that, stop that. So whilst I was, you know, I do change my mind. I do feel like, yes, he should lose endorsements because, you know, if, you're, if I'm saying your brand has been tarnished, then that also means that your endorsements come with it because your endorsements are tied to your brand. So really and truly, I was agreeing and disagreeing with myself. So I do see that why, you know, your endorsements will just go. But my only issue was the obsessiveness that was beginning to occur. And this obs obsessiveness I've seen with the Caroline Flag. And you just never know what could happen. Next thing you know, God forbid, he could X, Y, Z, um, and it could just go really left because of the obsessiveness that I was beginning to see. Not really people invested in his relationship because we all watch the show. Not people who are angry with what he's done because you're entitled to vent and frustrate. But for those people who are sending him um, death threats, for those people who are sending him specific stuff or are obsessed with every single little, little like move, it could be a minority of people, that is what I was trying to get to. And also, you know, there was this kind of worry of, you know, oh my God, is Caleb gonna, gonna do this? I don't know why I was worrying like this, but then I realized why I was last night. It actually wasn't, hasn't got anything to do with Caleb, but the fixation of death for me. Guys, I'm a, I'm a different man to what I was, who I was last year, a completely different man. I have seen five people close to me die in front of me. I am sick and tired, guys, absolutely sick and fucking of tired, grabbing a fucking shovel and burying somebody every two, three months. I am sick to death of it. Honestly, like I'm done. All I've, like, it, and that's what it did. This idea of worrying about maybe why Caleb could do this or X, Y, Z, or in general people, it really, what it is for me, this fixation of death is just really a, reflection on my PTSD, my post-traumatic stress disorder. It causes this stress within me. I get quite apprehensive. I do kind of, you know, exaggerate, not really exaggerate, but I get quite worried here and there, trying to be more cautious and unbiased here and there with you know, certain stuff as I've gone on. Because you, listen, when you, when you have close people in your life that are extremely close to you and you're burying them with a shovel, you change. You become a different person extremely different. So for those people saying that, oh, you know, they're disappointed in Murad and stuff like this, I've seen a tweet or there, I feel like you guys are being extremely insensitive and I feel like you guys are being extremely weird. Caleb just in them handcuffs, sitting in the damn police car is where it is, damn. Um, but you know, that that is where I was coming from and it does bring a lot of PTSD for me. It makes me get anxious here and there. Sometimes I can't sleep because you're just scared about people dying. You're scared about this, you're scared about death, X, Y, Z, whether it be for either Justine, Caleb, God forbid, or anybody involved. Now the Caroline Flat situation was crazy because she deserved that, um, you know, dragging because of what she did, but the relentless onslaught did not stop. And then one day we all woke up in the UK and we were different because we were thinking, wait, what the hell just happened? Hey, coming at you with breaking news. I can confirm that Caroline Flack has unfortunately passed away and it was by suicide. This is very distressing news, very distressing indeed. I don't really know how to start this video or how to end it. I Caroline Flack is gone, like what the hell? So we can just shock you because you don't know, you know, this this doesn't exude Caleb of any of his actions or justify any of his actions. He's a waste man and he deserved to be dragged, which is why we all dragged him. I'm not talking about people who 
hate him for what he did or say that he's wrong for what he did. I'm talking about those who are, you know, getting obsessed with this. And I've only seen this with this particular couple because and maybe I want to say Love Island American viewers, maybe because when it comes to the UK, yes, we were pissed with what Gregory did. Yes, we loved you one day and how Danny treated and, you know, X, Y, Z. But we don't, nobody here really got obsessed with them. We kind of moved on quite quickly. Once the season ended, give it a month. Nobody was really massively upset with Gregory. Yes, I say his name here and there, but I'm not going to go in on him. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there wasn't this, I have yet to see this obsessiveness. I have yet, major support, yeah, I've seen them for UK Islanders, but the obsess, obsessiveness that I've seen, it can get a lot for both people, and especially Justine, it can just be a lot for her because she's dealing with the situation, dealing with that, and some people say, oh, you know, Murad, but what if you're being a bit insensitive, Justine? I feel like you guys are extrapolating this and doing way too much. I talk to the damn girl. I know X, Y, Z. She's been very um, appreciative to me. She's messaged me recently, been very thankful for X, Y, Z. So, you know, it's all good and it's all good and it's all calm. All absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. That is what I was coming from. That is where I'm coming from, guys. I'm a changed man. I have lost so many people. That day that I ran into the hospital screaming and shouting to find out which ward my grandmother was in and looking at her dead and this was somebody who I lived with every single day, looked after, it's just a lot to deal with. And then my grandfather again, then my best friend again, then my cat that I've known for 20 years, then my uncle that literally two weeks ago. It's just too much, guys. I'm just, I'm over it. That's why I'm just a little bit more, you know, just a little bit more, like I'm trying to find the best, aren't like I'm trying to be like, like because you just it gets you get PTSD, you get you 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 just change and it's it's, it's annoying. So yes, we should drag these people, which is what I did, and I dragged the hell out of him, and I'm gonna continue to drag him. But I'm just being a little cautious. The Lucy stuff, yes, we dragged her because of the racism stuff. But if I kept dragging her every single day going in on her for the next six months every single day. That is just weird behavior. Like, I don't need to be doing that. You drag the fool for somebody, then it developed. Okay, we drag her again because you want to speaking out again. Now it's ended. I don't need to be talking about her and dragging her left, right, center and going in on her today, tomorrow, until the weekend. Like, there's no need for me to do that. That's when it gets obsessive. That's what I mean. Don't get, and I would never DM anyone anything because it's just, it's obs it's just weird. It, you're you're in, wasting your time too much. That's what I'm getting to. Seven minutes I've spoken about this now. I'm ranting. This is a very long video. Anyways, an islander has gotten into my DM, guys. An islander has 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 gotten into my DM. Who do you guys think it is? This is why I feel like this, situa this situation works for everybody. The islander obviously wants me to talk about them. Maybe, I would assume so. Not entirely. That could just be one reason. Um, so maybe they get that kind of relevancy here and there. Cool. It gives me content and then it gives you some kind, some kind of tea. Something to, you know, to, to talk about. So it's a win-win situation for everybody involved. Um, I really don't think it's that serious. Um, but yes, yeah, so we have Miss... Love Island USA Kirsten, who has arrived into the DMs. I was thinking, I did not expect this. It's like three days after. Um, I'm thinking, damn, well, this is gonna be about the, the 26,000 teeth comment. She done pitch, she done angry at me. She's gonna vent and shout or something. And I'm like, Kirsten, today's not the day. Cause I'm with this migraine, today is not the damn day. But this is what she says. She says, just watch some of your stuff on YouTube and I have to say, you are great at what you, you, are great at what you do. You are captivating and consistent content and I applaud you. I do want to clear something up. I am not bothered or sensitive about some 26,000 teeth. Listen, when I say this, it just makes me laugh. About some 26,000 teeth comment, I actually laugh myself and I'm a large open mouth laugher, as you guys know. I was just made aware of everything and just a little confused. No blood, blood. Everything's fine. I just want to reach out to you and also say thank you for speaking out about some of the... Um, the politics, I feel everyone needs to be held accountable, and of course that includes me. I've been edu educating myself more every day, as everyone should. Looking forward to watching more of your videos. Very sweet, calm, collective. Now, she could have come very left if she wanted to, but she didn't. She kept it sweet, kept it cute, very mature. Um, she doesn't have any issue with it, uh, the 26,000 you know, teeth comment. Like, of course, it's just a joke. She doesn't find it sensitive, or she isn't as offended by it. Now, I feel like Love Islanders are entitled to feel a way or anybody that I review are entitled to feel away because I'm talking about you. Obviously, you have to expect it because you've gone on these public shows, but they're also entitled to feel away if, you know, because they might take it personal. I don't blame them for taking it personal, but it never is personal. There's no beef from me side. There's no intent. I don't hate anybody. Like, it's always just jokes, fun and laughter. If I see you on the road, hello, how are you? If at best, like, it's, it's not that serious for me. Like, I'm not involved, guys. I'm only here to address it. Do you understand? I'm not involved. I'm only here to address it. Obviously, my merch. Go ahead and buy if you want. Link in the bio. But I feel like, you know, she's been a good sport and, you know, she's just taken on board. When it comes to some videos, I can be quite charged, um, especially my political videos. And of course, I would be because the world is an absolute mess. Um, but of course, she's taken that on board. And you know what? X, Y, Z here and there. People need to look into this. Thanks and keep up with the video. So it was a very nice message. And I feel like, you know, all good with Kirsten. And I didn't, I, I wasn't following her massively in the villa, but um, she was obviously there with Carrington and 
and Laurel or Lauren. I keep getting these Lauras and Laurens and Laurels just messed up. But anyways, yeah, we have Curtis now who's coming for Mora, shading the hell out of him. Um, her, sorry, for no reason, I don't know why. He's obviously gone on Celebs Go Dating. I don't know why he's gone on the show, but of course he's gone in there to earn his $4.59. And he obviously is talking to the girl, saying that, you know what, my type has always been blonde. It's never been this. I'm a skinny blonde. I'm not really here for the Instagram girls who change their bodies, whatever. Directly shaded Mora, because Mora is a brunette. You were with a brunette for a while. So if blondes are your type, why were you with Mora? Was it just a transactional, you know, relationship? Relationship? Was it ever real? It doesn't, are you exposing yourself? And then to kind of shade her and to say that, you know, I get what you're saying that Instagram individuals give this fake persona in life, and I get that opinion, and everybody's entitled to that because I do, it does make sense. But the way you're saying it as well, in tie to that comment, it was just felt like it was shading Mora. And I feel like it was unnecessary, but I feel like Curtis is very butthurt by the entire situation and he's not talking to any of the islanders, kind of stranded on his own island. But that is karma for how you treated Amy because that was horrific absolutely horrific you had one of the biggest game plans in that damn villa one of the biggest players and i feel like you got away with a lot of critique you got away with a lot of critique because it all went down on gregory when he obviously finished and danny and michael but you mr curtis you got away with a lot and that's what i'm saying that is all i'm saying this video is so long guys i'm just talking like i'm actually just talking like i need to just shut up sometimes i don't know we also have you one day who's come out with a very important statement and I'm here for the statement. I, I really, really am. She says, my name is you. Oh, ad blocker, for goodness, Lord have mercy, man. She said, my name is you one day, mispronouncing or changing um, people's names. Um, what do you mean ad blocker detected? I have removed the ad blocker now. Can you just get out of my life? Just talking. Uh, my name is you one day, mispronouncing or changing people's names is just another form of racism, she says. Um, pronouncing your name isn't even important. Why are you making such a big deal of it? Let's be honest, your name isn't is important. Well, let me tell you exactly why my name is important and pronouncing it is correctly is key to my identity. And a lot of people who are reading this will know this story all too well. Believe me, I do. The, the gaping anxiety you feel just before you introduce yourself to someone, writing this piece made me tap into a memory of my five-year-old self when it was time for to roll call at school, I could feel my name coming up close as I squeezed the seat of my chair, held my breath and prayed the substitute teacher didn't butcher my name. It had taken about five months for the first one to get it right. I went home to my mum when I grew up and had kids. I would give them European names and normative names so no one would laugh at them. My mum sat me down and said, you don't even know how beautiful your name is. It was the first time she told me what my name meant. Let me repeat that. You don't even know how beautiful your name is. My name means to fulfill somebody's wish. People would butcher my name left, right and centre. You know, even call me M-U, Moo, like I'm some damn cow. I didn't, I, like, listen, I, didn't, I wasn't bothered by it, but, but in hindsight, pronounce my name with your chest um, and pronounce it properly. People say Murad, it's Murad. That is how you pronounce my name. And you know, I feel like she has, this has been a major think piece for everybody on social media in the last week. And she actually has inspired a lot of people. You one day has inspired a lot of people now when it comes to everybody saying, you know what, pronounce me properly. You know, this is that. The anxiety it brings when you're at school, when you're at an appointment, somebody's calling you out. I was just at an appointment and they call my name and I'm thinking oh, they're going to pronounce it wrong. You have this thought in your mind as a brown, black, you know, East Asian, South Asian or, you know, Latin individual. You kind of have these or just a, or when you're or not even just that. Eastern European when you just have a name that isn't normative and people need to take the time to understand it but they don't want to take the time when you are struggling to pronounce a name that is okay you, you you're struggling but you there's effort there's intent you're trying to be nice you know people make mistakes it's fine but when people are not bothered that is where the issue arises and if you're bothered to learn about Daenerys um, Targaryen Balenciaga you can definitely pronounce you one day but there's no bother, you know, you're not bothered to do it. You don't really care to do it. And that is where the disgusting format happens. And she does go through this major think piece on the independent. And I feel like everybody should read it. It's extremely well. I've talked so much in this video. I don't want to prolong it for you guys. It's very long. Um, but I'm here for it. I feel like she's inspired a lot of people in the last week. My pizza is here. And I'll catch you guys soon for another video. Subscribe, subscribe. I'm coming. Subscribe, guys.